Hey everyone, Track Doc here. And today's discussion will focus on a common cause of lower extremity pain, not only in youth athletes, but athletes of all ages, stress fractures. Stress fractures are microscopic cracks that occur as a result of repetitive stress over time on a specific bone. Stress fractures can occur in nearly any bone in the body, but over 50% occur in the lower leg. The most common cause of a stress fracture is an abrupt increase in training duration, frequency, or intensity without proper rest. There are also medical issues that can contribute to the development of stress fractures, such as sleep deprivation, nutritional deficiencies, and hormonal imbalances. In some competitive female athletes, eating disorders can develop, resulting in lower estrogen, decreased bone density, and an increased risk of these fractures. Athletes will typically present with complaints of pain during running over a specific area in their lower legs or feet. Most commonly, stress fractures occur in one of the metatarsals, the long bones of the midfoot, or in the tibia, the larger bone in the lower leg. On physical exam, the patient is typically pinpoint tender over the bone that has the injury. There may or may not be swelling. X-rays during the early stages of a stress fracture may not be helpful as the microscopic cracks are often not visible. However, after weeks of symptoms, repeat X-rays may demonstrate a healing response and help identify the area of injury. It is worth noting that stress fractures are more prominent in adolescents and adults than younger children. Pre-adolescents are more likely to suffer a stress reaction in a specific area of their painful bone called the growth plate. Growth plates are found throughout the long bones of young children and are susceptible to injury from repetitive stress. Growth plates are comprised of cartilage cells that enable bones to grow over time. Microfractures and stress and inflammation can occur in this cartilage layer with repetitive activity causing pain. X-rays are often normal, but may demonstrate some widening of the growth plate. Seaver's disease, which presents as heel pain in a young child during running, is a common example of this injury and is covered in another video. The treatment of stress fractures is simply rest, avoiding the activity that caused pain for approximately six weeks. With growth plate pain, two to three months of rest may be required to get resolution of symptoms. Cast and or braces are sometimes used if there is significant pain with walking. If pain-free, low-impact activities such as swimming, water jogging, or biking can be performed to maintain fitness. After approximately six weeks of rest and if pain-free, a running program can be initiated but progresses slowly. A good rule of thumb is to increase running volume by approximately 10% each week. Although the majority of stress fractures are low risk and heal without permanent disability, there are a few situations that bear mention. First, do not ignore progressive pain over time, as running on a stress fracture can result in a complete fracture or a non-healing stress fracture, and these may require surgical treatment. Second, never ignore groin pain in a repetitive running sport. Stress fractures can occur in the hip and these are particularly worrisome as they can result in permanent disability if they go on to a complete fracture. Stress fractures of the hip are commonly treated with prolonged non-weight bearing or surgery. So what can we do to prevent stress fractures? Children and adolescents who participate in sports have higher fitness levels and markedly increased expectations about their performance. As a result, more and more children are sustaining overuse injuries such as stress fractures. Parents and coaches need to understand the deleterious effects of overtraining. Children cannot tolerate the volume of training of adults. More is not always better. Training errors such as increasing practice without proper rest, hard surfaces, improper shoe wear, and an inadequate diet can all be avoided to help prevent these injuries. Hope you found this helpful. Stay tuned for more updates on common injuries in youth runners.